I was sitting in the spot for one of the players. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, was oh, Irene. I know, I know. They're like, why hasn't the game started? I'm, I'm sitting in this spot. Put me in, Coach. Dude, Curse Academy's like, Bunny Fufu has been subbed out for Zyrene. <laughs> Let's do this. If you could cast and play at the same time, I'd be impressed. Oh, that would be very impressive. But at the same time, we see all these bands being targeted from Fusion over at St. Vicious. Whereas yesterday, what we ended up seeing from Fusion was they targeted the bot lane of Prototype and they ended up targeting uh, rule 18. They banned Janna, they banned Vayne, and then Nian Tonso would go even in that lane after a lane swap. The two games that they that they lost were when Nian Tonso and Glebe were going head to head with the bot lane of Final Five. When they lane swapped it, the next three games, they won every game, but they had to ban out the best AD carry and the best support and set Nian Tonso up for these amazing games that he had. They're not doing that here, and actually the first pick goes over to Curse Academy, and that is a flex pick too for Keen. Yeah, very much so. And again, Keen, he can just pick just about anything. They, they've always said that he has one of the deepest champion pools in North America, not just the challenger scene, just incredibly high depth of uh, champions he can play in. Of course, Comp, no stranger to playing the Corky as well, but they have a lot of options on the board. On the other side, a very quick jungle and top pickup. Not in Nintendo. Great synergy between those two champions, Cataclysm and the uh, Rumble Ultimate Equalizer. And Mach Noon, he played Rumble earlier, and he went 11-5 and 11 on that champion and kind of dictated the pace of that game. And that was actually the game that got them their momentum back in the set against Final Five. Yeah, Mach Noon has been you know, nearly flawless so far in this tournament. The couple of stumbling blocks he had, he did get solo killed a couple times by Rux during that prior set. But again, you can't account for small mistakes. That's about the only thing that we've really seen out of this guy. And Fusion in general, they seem to really be able to rally after the fact. And they, you know, they looked a little bit stumbly after that second game, but they really sat back down, thought about it, everything resets, and all of a sudden when you can click like that, you can do incredible things. Yeah, and Nintendo, this will be his fifth game in a row on Jarvan the fourth in 4.20. He played at least one game, didn't quite work out for his team, but he had a good individual performance. So now he's going with the more team-oriented thing. And Fusion, they're gonna have to get team fights in the later game to end these games, because that was a big struggle for them, because they wouldn't group appropriately, and they didn't get the right fights against Final Five, and ended up losing two of those games against a team that the matchup, everybody thought was gonna be 3-0 Fusion. Yeah, and on the other side, Curse Academy, they're not really revealing too much of their strategy. A lot of these picks are very flexible. Of course, it's likely we see Keen in that Zed role. That's kind of been the thing they've been trying to get him to do. Ponser, Lissandra is probably one of the not the highest tier not banned champions for him right now. So it's likely we're seeing this flesh out, but they still have options to move it around. On, on the other side, of course, who he gets the Cinder lock in. Yeah, and Curse Academy went for all of these power picks very early on, very contested things that they wanted to take off the field so that they couldn't be picked up as opposed to hiding things like picking their support and jungler. So I like this strategy because Lissandra is extremely potent right now. And that's most likely gonna be in the top lane for Hanser. He was favoring things like Maokai and Kassadin all throughout the series, but he was picking Maokai into Lissandra as the counter. So now that Lissandra is open and he's able to get that pick for himself, he's very comfortable on that champion. Whoa, you have a Karthus lock in right now. Okay. And that's. That's a St. Vicious jungle, jungle Karthus. As a jungle Karthus there, most likely for St. Vicious. You know, the guy with the jungle tier list, what's he bringing out today? This is a high stakes match too. This is not the match where you mess around. Yeah, you gotta think he's hiding that one in his pocket for a little while. No surprises that Bunny gets the Thresh lock in either. So it looks like we see the way that this Curse Academy lineup is gonna be fleshed out. On the other side, Leib is gonna Morgana lock in. That of course used to be typical counter as well. You take the Black Shield to try and prevent getting hooked in. Yeah, and that's the thing that actually Bunny Fufu did to Sheep yesterday is he let him pick Thresh and then he picked Morgana into it. Just said, I'm just going to black shield everything and then I'm going to have more pot ultimates in team fights. And a couple of tournament firsts here for Fusion as well. Who he hasn't played Syndra this tournament. He has played it quite a lot in solo queue. He hasn't been able to get his hands on it. If you look at Final Five's bans, they banned it every game except for one of them and then it got picked up. Yeah. Actually, no, it was LeBlanc that he actually picked up as opposed to it. Ah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, LeBlanc is still on the table, but he, they banned Syndra almost every game, I believe four out of the five, and then the other game he just picked LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Glebe hasn't played Morgana in this tournament, but he's been mostly sticking to the Jan and the Nami, that kind of stuff. Of course, he did that one Soraka game, but, you know, it does show a little bit more depth. Obviously, Fusion, they have an extensive support staff. They know how to really work out little issues with champion pools and little issues with execution, and you can see how well they're able to recover from that. So, looking at them in the pod right now. Tense concentration all around as they load up into the game. This is going to be an awesome start to the set. 
it really could go either way. It's so strong these two teams are, and really, we've seen some surprises already. The St. Vicious Jungle Karthus, man knows the jungle, though. Yes, yes, he does. If anybody knows the jungle, it is St. Vicious. This guy is a big innovator, even though people don't think of him as somebody who, like, whips out the new picks, but he kind of just whips out the next thing that's going to become standard. Yeah, whatever he's thinking at the time, of course. We want to know what you guys are thinking. You can go ahead and tweet us at LOL Esports using the hashtag LCS Expansion, predictions, prophecies, and, of course, what your favorite plays have been so far. So with that said, we're going to get loaded up into the game, it looks like. Yeah, and I'm looking at the compositions here. Fusion have this kind of pick-oriented with Syndra as well as Morgana, but then they have team fight to back it up later on, which is really, really good for them because they favor these team fights in the late game, but they have to win them because their team fights have been pretty sloppy when they were playing Final Five. Whereas Curse Academy, Welcome they have this team composition that can pretty much do a little bit of everything. They can skirmish, they can fight, they can pick people off, they can poke a tiny bit with Corky. I really like what they've done for themselves and set up all these different conditions where if it's like if Keen ends up getting fed, he can split push. St. Vicious has a good job farming. He can gank a tiny bit as well. And then you have Hanser on Lissandra, which is just a really, really great champion in the meta. And up against a Rumble, it does pretty damn well. Yeah, and I, they really prioritized trying to be able to take the 1v1 that they were confident in being able to do if they got the counter picks. I mean, in Curse Academy, they've been all about that. So not just Hanser, obviously they want to get him in a comfortable role because Mac Noon is a very tough opponent. But at the same time, you also want to get Keen into a very comfortable role. And they did lock in the Zed early, but it's sort of been not necessarily a signature champion. This guy pretty much plays everything. But it's been the champion that they've wanted him to really be the best at and not have to worry about whatever gets picked against him. So that's going to be very much a skill thing in there. And, and Fusion, you know, they... they kind of didn't have much revealed to them. They sort of just had to pick based on what they thought would do good in a general sense. And that's, that's a good takeaway for Curse Academy. Yeah, and Keen's really big on counter picking, like you said. And he can outplay a Syndra with his ultimate. It's really going to be on that part of it. But he, the, Zed is his most played champion of this tournament right now. So he's played it three out of the five games or six games that he's played. So a 50% pick rate for him. Pretty much a comfort champion in that regard. He only whips out the crazy things like Hecarim in certain matchups, and he whips out like the Cassidy that he had yesterday. That was actually very impressive in one of his better games. Yeah, and he did play Azir too, and that's I think the first time we've seen it uh, in, in, well, not necessarily in competitive play, but in this tournament especially, it was uh, pretty solid all around the yeah. board. It really, like, it, it kind of helped them secure the win up, got a lot of zoning control out, and, you know, you can just see this guy really works his way around like a bunch of different champions. It's very, very uh, creative the way he's able to do things. In fact, that one... Really awesome outplay when he had the uh, just like the shadow shuriken double just for the little extra. That was damage. crazy. That I know, was right? crazy when the second shadow just threw out the shuriken as he was getting the gap closed on him. It was that was beautiful. It's, it's split second decisions like that. They're just absolutely. I don't, I don't even incredible. know if that was a decision as much as it was luck. Well, instinct I'm just, at the I'm very saying, least. Like I don't want to take credit away from him, but it was beautiful play nonetheless. Yeah, and there he will be on the set this time. And it's, always, it's actually, I love watching Azed just in general because especially versus a Cinder, there's just so much potential for those 1v1 outplays that we see a little bit more frequently in the Challenger scene sometimes in the LCS, but it, you know, these guys, they tend to give each other a lot more respect when it gets up to that big league, so you don't see as many solo kills, and we'll see if that happens this time around. Well, we a seen a lot of solo out. kills yesterday. Yes, we did. Especially in top lane. Top lane's become kind of a, you leave it on an island, junglers don't have as much presence early, like it's like, four minutes, four and a half minutes, or even later than that, that you see the first gank come out. So top laners that can really stick to their own guns kind of thrive. And that is Mac Noon's style too. Just He doesn't just stick to his own guns. He fires them about every five seconds. This guy just goes absolutely crazy. He is spotted out by that ward to start this one off, however. And it looks like we are going to see fairly standard stuff, although Bunny and Cop are hanging out by that blue side. We could be in for a lane swap. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see a lane swap here, but I think Curse Academy is smart enough to think that the lane swap is going to come from Fusion or the Invade. Because if you think about the three games that Fusion won, it was because they invaded and because they lane swap, and this could be huge. They're walking into a bush that has everybody. And they got caught. That's Mac Noon face check and having to burn his flash right away. And they are in retreat right now. Hot Pursuit, Curse Academy chasing on out. They don't have as much damage to start this one off, but the plan is foiled and revealed. That only works once, boys. Yeah, but that's going to give them the lane swap, and they are stuck in this matchup here. So, obviously, Curse Academy did their research. They watched Fusion's games and said they invaded every game that they won. They lane swapped every game that they won. Do that on them and see the strategy coming. That same thing is not going to work against Curse Academy. Fusion is going to have to make some adaptations this game and this series. Well, they have certainly been able to make adaptations mid-series, but starting off the bat, they do try that 
old tried and true trick doesn't quite work out against the more experienced squad of Curse Academy. Teleport now being burned, Mach Noon making his way to the bottom. So lane swaps both sides around to start this game off. And Bunny landing another hook, nearly getting the end into tower range. He does. And this is, I feel, a much more even AD carry support matchup. I, I want to call it a bot lane, but I'm getting a little topsy-turvy there. Yeah, that was actually a really good hook there because the level twos had already come out for fusion. So it actually gives them that little extra leeway that they needed. Saint doing, I believe, just two camps there and having to back. Karthus is not exactly what you call a tanky champion. Not durable, yeah. Yeah, not so much. On the other hand, Nintendo Dex perfectly fine on Jarvan. He has played that quite a lot going forward. In the mid lane, we didn't touch on this too well, but Keen, he's actually been pushed a little bit further back here. Who he definitely has an easier time of it in this early game, has double the CS of him, a little bit less now, but it's it's our life for Zed post or pre six. Yeah, and speaking of life pre six, St. Vicious's ganks won't be that potent, but level six, he just ganks every lane at the same time. Exactly, he doesn't have to leave the jungle either. Yeah, it's it's called multitasking. Amazing jungler in that regard, but the problem here is that his farm and the way that he actually... Ooh, oh my goodness, Bunny. Bunny just every single time. Homing missiles on those hooks right there, and Cop able to just add a little more harass to it. And Tendude looking to do a little bit of counter jungling of his own. He's going to try and check in for wards, see if they can't get a bit of early dragon control on this game. Just throws that one down over by the Raptor camp. He wants to at least keep tabs on St. Vicious because he knows that Karthus is not a durable jungler. He wants to be able to see what life total he's at. Ooh, Keen's doing a pretty good job of returning damage on Ahui, forcing him to uh, pop a couple of his pots. Still has a couple of his own. And yeah. he's got that longsword start, of course. A Zed, pretty common thing. Yeah, he also allows him to start with more potions than his opponent, so his effective HP is higher. Ooh, Bunny. Throws out the lantern, a little bit of shielding on that one, but they do have some damage on Glebe as well. It's just been a sustained lane all around the board. Once Cop starts ramping up, though, there may be another story in the end. So far, staying ahead of him on the CS game, but he's not far behind. And that's another thing we're seeing in forward point 20 is a lot of laners trying to harass early, knowing that there isn't a lot of punishment from the jungle, especially when there's a Karthus on the field. But look at that, another! Yeah, he does hook him in, and the Black Shield comes in just a little bit too late. On the other hand, oh, we'll talk about it in a minute, because Nintendo ganking in the mid, forcing the flash out of Keen. Very quick reaction times. That guy just never gets hit with any CC that he sees coming. That's a big thing, too, because when you watch that, you could have been like, well, he didn't have to flash there because who he didn't have any mana. He did have an Ignite available, but you also just don't want to take the damage because then you don't have to back as, as frequently or as soon. Yeah, I wanted to, to touch on... We talked a lot about how Bunny, he's been really landing those skill shots like crazy, but on the other hand, Glebe, he's played incredibly well in this Morgana, and... We hadn't seen him play it, of course, on this patch in this tournament so far, but obviously he's very comfortable on it. So yes. a lot of fallback choices for Fusion. They're, they're not just playing specific comfort pick champions. And here we go, trying to set up a little bit of a harass trap cop. Yeah. I think he's wise to it. Senses are tingling. Yeah, there would be a Morgana in that bush pretty much nine out of 10 times. Just about. It's not that other. The 10th time is the Garen. It's not that other 10th. Oh, Ooh. Phosphorus Bomb. Ooh, and he dodges the Dark Binding. Nice positioning there. Still able to get a little bit more farm here. And he's actually caught up in the end, Tonso. So this is to be really good here for Curse Academy's bottom lane in the top. Saint hitting that level five already. Just farming up six minutes and he's ahead of Nintendo. He's already backed and has his Trailblazer. Not seen too many champions to that, that go the Mages enchant, but pretty likely we'll see that on Karthus. <laughs> now, it's all about Devourer on Karthus. Oh yeah, <laughs> clear those camps. Yeah, he's gonna get that Magus enchant, which actually is better than the Spectral Wraith from before, because it's got 20% CDR on it. Yeah, and you can just continually start laying down waste. Now, Hanser and Magnin, we didn't really talk about these two guys too much. It's not really going to be too bloody until level 6. We're just about at that point. There we go. Hanser's going to get the first level up. Magnin still hanging strong there. Pretty dead even on the CS. And actually, these two teams look very nice. evenly matched across the board. Bunny's Thresh play, just in terms of like his laning phase and what he's doing with that a relic shield is really good. Just getting that last hit from a range, not making his AD carry have to go forward for it or himself and risk the harassment. Really, really good. But here's the thing. Is Nintendo pulled up to the top lane. Once again, that's where the shot caller is. Nintanzo calling the shots. He's going to call the top, his jungler to that lane to help him out, to help him get ahead. Yeah, they, they really have been focusing so much attention here. Now Cop, who is able to valk away. Black shield was... on. And Nintendo Dex nearly baited himself out there, but he gets bailed out. By Glee Glarbu. Saint hitting the level six already. He's ready to do those global ganks. He has not left the jungle or caused any pressure, but he hasn't paid for it in any of the lanes, whether it's in CS or in kills. The only lane that's struggling a tiny bit is that middle lane, but that's the matchup of Zed versus Syndra in the early game. He's got to have a particular strategy in mind for this, besides just 
of course, trying to land out his ultimate whenever he gets the chance to do it. It's very, very mastermind uh, strategy St. Vicious usually in this in these jungle matchups. Ooh. Oh my goodness, Bunny just continuing to land oh those. God. A cop actually, Valk dodges the Dark Binding. They are just two-stepping everything Fusion's bot lane is throwing at him. That is crazy. Bunny is a support player. That, Again, oh my. every time it's off cooldown. Oh, they pulled him in tower range. There's oh my ulti. goodness. That is going to be the Sinking. time for the card. That's first blood. It's St. Vicious picking it up without even having to leave his jungle. Globally ganked by Karthus. <laughs> oh, man. The one two oh, punch, yeah. man. That's the thing, too, is you always have to be conscious of that as a laner. If you get hooked like that. Again, they're going in on it. Oh, my goodness. He's, He's got it. He's got a big oh, one. Oh, not enough damage. Oh, oh. never mind. It's Bunny Foo Foo. That flash auto is always worth. Man, just the fact that this lane is the lane that was struggling in even lanes against Final Five, and now it's having the same problem against Curse Academy speaks just wonders about what Fusion need to do in Champion Select to set them up, because that's what they had to do last time, and now it's not happening. And Tendu got pulled that lane, no effect. Gleam, he's getting hooked. Me and Tonsil's getting hooked. It's really difficult for this lane to go even, and they got called on the lane swap, which was really good by Curse Academy. Yeah, and this is just working out so well for Curse. They just have uh, not only a really good synergy, Cobb and Bunny obviously have been playing together for a while, but the consistency is there. Bunny is on Thresh. This is the champion that he's just made so many insane plays on. He continues to do it. And now you see Hanser starting to take the place up top. They're just confident that they can move down to the bottom side and take things as normal. This helps them get some dragon control. I love this because as soon as he sees Hanser top, take the Scuttle Crab, get that vision, because there's going to be a little gap before your bottom lane that's up in the top lane can actually swap back down. Yeah, it's actually a really, really good way to do it without getting punished as well, too, because you know that they haven't... They obviously had to back. There's not going to be anyone in the area. Saints really busy clearing camps, but it's just been uh, rough to really get anything back in this. Obviously, it's not a huge advantage. It's a thousand gold that's pretty decent, but they don't really seem to have an answer for it, and that's the problem. Those dragons are going to be incredibly crucial going forward, so Fusion is going to be eyeballing that one. Fusion lost a lot of the early dragons to Final Five as well. They didn't Fusion, prioritize Fusion them. were really focused on just dominating the lanes as much as they could. And they ended up with things like 7,000, 10,000 gold leads very early on. And Final Five never won an early game except for that game two. But here's the thing is they lost. Fusion lost being 10k up, being multiple thousands of gold up. And then they always struggled to close the game. Getting these early dragons is definitely going to help them get that momentum, especially since Curse Academy are 1,000 gold up at 10 minutes. Yeah, uh oh, ooh, Nintendo, he, he might goes. have to bail out here. Keen's gonna jump on him with the death mark, and there's the Cataclysm. Keen, he's oh. burning down. He didn't have enough healing. Who he's gonna pick him off? And here we go, Saint Vicious joining the fray. Everything's on defile, but down goes Saint. The flash away, who he, no Nintendo, ulti. both escape. He's not got the ulti available. Oh, back oh my goodness, why did they walk into that one? Who he's so low right now, burning away, but he did manage to get out of there in time. A two for none trade. And they answer back with the gold and the kills. That was explosive. Everybody just converged into the middle so quickly there. Hauntzer TP'd, Machnoon TP'd, threw down the equalizer. Really good play. Everybody just coming out of their lanes to be a part of this fight. Yeah, he really came out of the woodwork there. And it wasn't like a 1v1. Oh, Bonnie's caught! My goodness. Nobody even stepped in his box. And the end, Tonso and Gleep Glarbu just recognizing that positional error. And just like that, it's even again between the two teams. Dead even, in fact. Yes. Yeah, it, I mean, that, that was a really good series of plays by Fusion. Again, this is why they like to fight. They just trust the fact that they have that split-second chaotic team fighting synergy together, and it just works wonders for them. Saint got a little far forward there. Obviously, Keen couldn't get involved, and then he went down. And from there, yeah, Fusion, they just thrive on that organized chaos. Yeah, and Fusion's doing what they should do with their composition is as soon as something happens in the mid game, everybody needs to group up and team fight. Like I said, Rumble Ulti, Cataclysm. Then you have just destruction potential, pick potential with Hu He and Glee Blarbu, and it's executed perfectly there to give them three kills for nothing. So far, so good for Fusion after it looked like a slightly rocky start there for the duo laners. They are able to get a little bit more back in their pockets. The kill did go to Nianton, so this guy has just been a master of keeping his KDA high. Hanser, ooh, sneaky back. Ooh, he is not going to spot that. He stopped, goes forward, gets the ward out. There we go. Yeah, there was something there before. It's gone now. The game sense on these players is really just incredible. They're, they they guess and anticipate they where everyone the is. Board. They did see that. I'll, I guess that'll help you a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs game sense when you have vision? But exactly. having the game sense to pl place the vision, I assume. Ah, uh, 
That's where that comes from. I mean, sometimes I go into games and I'm just turn it all off, and you're like, no wards this game. But look at this Nintendo dude. Going after check on Keen. There we go. He's going to shadow step out, but there's the Cataclysm on. He's going to actually death mark on Nintendo, and then he Whoop. goes back, staying alive Whoop. through the unleashed power. What a play. And the Marilla Nomicon sitting there. Mach Noon has the equalizer. He's just going to throw it down randomly. Oh, he might do that. There's enough damage. Yeah, Keen's realizing it's the sh turret shield. Yep, they're going to just try and take the tower there. They get something at least for that one. Or at oh. least get a little bit more damage Here on it. Here comes Hanser. Oh, Nintendo, dude, he's in trouble. The Equalizer's thrown down, but it's already too late. Hanser trying to move away the Wall of Pain. Keeping Mac Noon from checking any further. And Curse Academy answer back, making the kill score 3-3. Three to three. three of their members very low, though. They're going to have to back. Who he still has some HP, but he doesn't really have the mana to continue to push this wave against Keen. He's not going to be able to for the time yeah, being. It's going to take a right. little while to do that. And then Keen's he'll just a back low, off. though. I mean, he, he doesn't have, you're right, he doesn't have, like, a whole lot of damage you can do since the mana is a little bit on the low side, but... Try to save up. Yep, Keen, on oh. the other hand, is pretty close to Keen's gonna have to dodge oh. this. There we go. Ooh. Oh, and he does. And he comes right back in. Yep. Oh. Oh. Nice flash by Bunny, actually. Puts the box down to try and slow him up, but the end already had the black shield. Here we go. They're going to look for a little bit more cop. Sending a big one to the back. Two seconds the on... Uh, two seconds on hook. Not going to continue the fight. Gleeb has to back, and it's going to leave me and Tonto by himself. All that is lonesome in this bottom lane. He should be able to deal for the time being all the same. Cop and Bunny are both proving to be very difficult opponents for him to deal with. Keen has to be so careful against Huhi here. Yeah, speaking of difficult opponents, Huhi right now, 30 CS up right now. Look at this, here comes Saint, trying to help. Yep. Haunter's low though. He's yep. silenced. Mach Noon, he can't really get out of this one. He has to walk through the wall of pain. He's just trying to dodge. The Karthus gang. Oh, goodbye. He got him hitting him with the red buff for the auto attack to slow him, so the lay waste hits. Yeah, and this is clearly something Saint has been practicing quite a bit. It's really just good play. When he does leave the jungle, he knows exactly where he needs to position himself to make results happen, but also just the timely use of his ultimates. You see, he's never used it, well, he's only used it once, but he hasn't used it at all in situations where it just isn't going to kill somebody. He yeah. saves that. It's a, it's a very key just, thing. Yeah, utility. he uses it for those kills. Saint wants to get, you know, a fed Karthus is something that you're always really scared of. But he's just sitting there in the way. Goodness, lane. he just lands those, like, completely through... The smallest of windows, and Nian Tanso just thought he was safe, but better check again. Yeah, St. Vicious has gone on record, too, saying that Bunny Fufu has a really, really good thresh, but he also thinks that he's one of the best supports in North America. And the fact that Bunny Fufu graduated high school, he's had the entire summer to think over his options, and he just decided to not go to college for a year. He's gone all in on league, and he's only gotten better. Yeah, now Hanser, he has been on on League for a little while now, and this guy, oh. you will barely find anyone harder working than him, it would seem, but maybe he might not get away from this one there, having to spend the ultimate, he's saves able to make it happen. He saves his flash, though. Instead of using his flash, he uses his ultimate and just trusts that he's going to get away and get that distance that he needs away from Rumble. Yeah, and he's uh, also, he's gone for the Lucidity Boots, too, to get that 50% CDR. We've obviously had a lot of debate about CDR in the community for a little while now since the, the double Merlin Nomicon has been kind of a thing, but well, this was a little bit of a different build, of course. Yeah, if you go Lucidity, Merlin Nomicon, you can get your Void Staff faster, you can get your Zonias faster, and not have to worry about that. And the fact that Lissandra in 413, we reduce the cooldown of her Q by a second, it's, I believe it sits at three seconds at max rank. You can get that down incredibly low to something like a 1.8 second cooldown. Something ridiculous. Oh, they're going to jump on Mac Noon right here. St. Vicious being brought to the party by Bunny Fufu. This is going to be the Dragon Start, though. A really good capitalization by Fusion. And it looks like Mac Noon will go down in this one, but they do take that to answer. And that first dragon being so crucial for those battle stats, you got to think that might be worth it. Yeah, that's definitely where the first dragon for one person. If Curse Academy continue to get a turret off of this and it's unanswered bottom, then it's kind of even in, in terms of what they traded. Yeah, that actually puts the pressure on Chris Academy to actually do a little bit more, considering they were the ones that did start that one off. And now another tower being traded a little bit bot here. Do they have enough damage to finish this one off? The end and Glebe are certainly making it look like that. And they have intended there for an insurance policy. They're going to trade towers. Well, Cop's been sitting in this bottom lane bush for a long time now because he doesn't even want to risk going up to the turret because he knows that Nintendo is around. Yeah, just tries to poke him out there with the big rockets and... Actually, the other tower does fall at the end of the day, but they're both very low, especially this one on the bottom cop. It's just a token of a health bar right now, and Tonso should just be able to poke it down, and he does. Bunny Fufu positions himself backwards a little bit, just in case for the lantern save. I really like this play from Bunny. He's 
a Thresh player that... Oh, we'll nope. talk about that in a second. He does get caught right there. Now, Glebe, he's getting the Soul Shackles on, and there's a Teleport coming in. They're taking this one all the way. They walk out of the Haunter. Soul Shackles. The box he still is there. Flash too. He's got the Clive. He's going to go forward for it, and he's going to get his ult out on the end, dodging away the Dark Finding. Cop's going to intercept it. The end, he might get away from this one, but the oh, Carcass ult is on. Does he have enough of a health bar? Oh. No, he doesn't. Kabu. Them global ganks from the fountain. Orbital Ion Cannons from St. Vicious all game long getting those ganks. 4 1 and 0 on Jungle Karthus. You know, just when you think you're safe to go out, it's almost not fair when the enemy team has a tactic strike. Man, that's like you better be nice. Big Brother Saint's watching. Oh, he is. And he's starting to hurt quite a lot. That Mages Enchant on his Ranger's Trailblazer, giving him that CDR as well as the AP there. Oh. Of course, now Buhi, he's roaming, he looking for a cop. Oh, he, get he has to get a flash into the lantern, and he just zoomed on out of there. And this is perfect, because Bunny just set me up again for the point I was going to make about him. He is such a great player on Thresh. Not only does he land hooks, he knows how to position for lanterns, which is something that a lot of Thresh plays. Ooh, Ooh. oh, just himself. <laughs> well, he's right. great for he's All great right. for his teammates, but sometimes right. he neglects himself. All right, so he's selfless in there that regard. I'll take the ult before you. Now it's on cooldown. Exactly. But yeah, so That's a team move. Bunny is a really good Thresh player because he knows like how to position himself for hooks, how to position himself for lanterns, and when to do those, and when to flay, when to hold on to it, when to not overlap his CC. And the fact that he's getting better on these other supports too makes him such a potent person. Because before, he was all about just the Thresh for the most part. He's gotten really good on things like Janna and Morgana. Really excited to see what comes from Bunny Fufu in the future as well. And the Morgana point is pretty solid too, just because he, he kind of knows the ins and outs of how to counterplay as well. And you can see this guy, he doesn't play passively. He doesn't just try to support whatever his carry is doing. He actively tries to set up and make plays happen. And this is what Cop loves. Cop is that consistent player who's always just kind of going and playing. He's playing well all the time. He's always a step above a lot of the other AD carries, in, especially in Challenger. But he needs to be set up sometimes. Oh, Here we go. Oh, oh. Blue Steel. Hello. And now Saint doesn't have any money. He oh, does. oh, but he flashes. does maybe get away from this one. I don't think so. Now, File's not going to be enough to take down Mac Noon. Oh, but he here comes Monster looking for the revenge. Maybe he'll find it. But there are a lot of members of Fusion here. So that is a big nope. Let's turn around. Yeah, through all of Fusion grouping up for this game pretty much even across the board. But there is a Dragon in Fusion's favor. And Keen, he's going to get some damage on this bot lane turret. And he's got some spikes for himself in terms of those mid-game items. No Blade of the Ring King completed yet. But... He's going to have to deal with this Zonia's on Huhi because he's just been farming so well. And then Zonia's Morello's as well. So Keen trying to dodge out the damage he does manage to do it. And that tower is down. So good to see a little bit more of that as the game progresses. Nintendo has been making some plays here as well. We didn't talk about him too much, but he's kind of not been able to get quite as involved as St. Vicious, but it, it's kind of an unfair advantage there for St. Yeah, and look at that, the early distortion boots onto Hanser so he can have his flash and his ultimate available to him more frequently, as well as his teleport. Yeah, really I like that start for him too, especially considering he's already been making big plays. No kills in his pocket, but he's been a big part of most of the ones that have happened. Pretty decent kill participation right now. Now, starting to look at this mid, there's no dragon available for another minute and a half, so Curse Academy's next easy objective is this mid lane turret. And you can see Ooh, he's sitting bottom, waiting for Keen to come back to the scene of the crime where he took that turret. Oh, he will There's always return, and oh my goodness, he starts to burst him down. Deathmark on to try and stop the Unleashed Power, has to Shadow Step. He's burning down with Ignite, and he gets away with a sliver of health. There's no way he was going to catch him. Keen still had his Flash available, who he did not have his. And that's going to be Scuttle Crab Control. He'll be up actually around the time that Dragon spawns. 75 seconds. Yeah, so if only they could take a little bit more off it, but still, they, they get he gets an ultimate and an Ignite for just his ultimate. So that's a pretty solid trade for Keen when you think about it, but he does have to go back. Now, a, a solid warding job here I want to talk about from Fusion. They've been able to get inside this jungle and make sure that they can keep tabs on the movements of not just St. Vicious, but the entire Curse Academy team. Yeah, and you talked about how he blew his ultimate to get Keen out of lane and also his Ignite, but the cost of that is the 40 CS up that he is right now. And that's not going to get closed anytime soon. It's actually only going to get bigger because who he just back and now he's going to come and continue to farm. Keen's going to have to go back down to that bottom lane, start getting some CS for himself because he missed out on that time frame by about seven CS, I would assume. Yeah, and it's it's kind of been the story of, of his mid lane and just wherever he does meet who he's been having a little bit of trouble dealing with him in one v one now. Leave and Nintendo are hanging out in this brush, waiting for someone to check a little dangerously close. They love setting these traps, but Cop is wise to it. Sends a big rocket leaves way. And that's the kind of thing that makes you think that bush is warded, too. 
Yeah, so you just check it. You hit somebody Ooh. insane. He still walks by it. He could be in trouble. The lantern's off, but he's actually not going to take it. There he is, oh. but he dies in mid transit. And he's not going to be around for this next fight. So squishy a champion is Karthus. And he's a jungler too. That means there's no smite available to steal this away from Fusion. Fusion also had this mid game team comp that allows them to fight you extremely effectively. Yeah, they're going to be able to take this down with, with no resistance whatsoever. And obviously, Chris Academy realized they can't really contest that one, giving up a second Dragon now over to Fusion. They will take this top. Monster's going to get a little bit back for this by the positioning, but it's just not the easiest thing to he deal with now. He's going to find Magnoon. Oh, he's going to have to, though. He might go down here. He's pretty low. He's actually taking his time about it, burning his flash. He still might not get away, and Magnoon just burns down the Ice Witch. Yeah, he, act he used his Glacial Path to clear the wave and that is his escape tool. And he had to wait for the cooldown to come back up, and it is not friendly in these earlier ranks. He is maxing it second, and it is maxed now, but it's nine seconds. Oh my goodness, Bunny keeps getting these hooks. That Phosphorus Bomb's gonna do oh. a lot of damage. They're gonna try to seal it up, but there's a huge shield there, and Nian is going to escape this time. Oh, it keeps getting close, though. Yeah, Gleeb with the shield there, and the heal from Nian Tonso to save him from the Requiem. Saints Gang, that's the first one that hasn't worked out for him. Yeah, well, it certainly looked like a sure thing, but that shield was an insane amount of absorption there that they were able to keep the end from ta being taken down. Now, Cop, no mana in this mid lane, but he's an AD carry. He'll be all right. Bunny Fufu going to join it. They're going to try and take down this mid, but there really hasn't been an extended siege by Curse Academy. They've just been trying to get better positioning on Fusion, whereas Fusion has just been interested in taking these fights consistently. Yeah, Fusion wants to fight you. Curse Academy, they're trying to split with Keen. But here's the thing is, Huhi is always going to answer him, because if you watch the previous series with Fusion, Huhi's always off on a side lane, regardless of the champion that he's playing, and he's trying to split push. He did it on Zed, he did it on LeBlanc, Cassidy, and Ezreal. He was just always in a side lane, and the 1-3-1 ended up happening, because Bok Noon wants to be very aggressive, the other three members are going to group mid, and then Huhi's off on the side lane doing whatever. So this is a strategy that Fusion use constantly, even when their team composition doesn't excel at that. It, it shows uh, some confidence, though, that they continually execute the same kind of strategy, not just if their team comp isn't necessarily the best I think it's a personality form. thing, and it, it is, too, but it's also, like, the fact that it works so well it just shows, like, that strength of how, how they are oh. as a team together. And, whoop, Saint, this time he's going to be able to pick that one up. Flashing away from the Equalizer, so he has to burn that one. Then Curse Academy is not really able to answer anything here. Again, they're, they're just a little bit slow to react, it seems. That was a little trigger happy there from St. Vicious because Bunny was right in the vicinity and he could have thrown him a lantern instead. Saving him that flash, but it's better safe than sorry because now Saint doesn't have to back as early and take as much damage. Very true, but Fusion will be perfectly happy with that trade. Keen still doing his best to dodge out Hoohy, but he just can't escape being out CS to your cop and Mac Noon. Oh, he's got a red on him. He's got silence. Oh, the Valk. Wow, that damage was big. And Cop gets his heal out a little bit early, but the calling is on him. Does he didn't have any escape. He does. It's a flash. But here comes Intender. Oh. The Lantern. Just when you think you've got him. He's safe, boys. The helicopter right there. Flying straight out. And that's the type of Lantern control that Bunny Fufu always seems to be around. Like, playing against Bunny Fufu, you're always like, why is he? How is he here? How is he there? He seems to be everywhere with those Lanterns. Yeah, lanterns or hooks is pretty much just what he's thrown out constantly, and the amount of mobility that Curse Academy has had individually is great. Yeah, and the fact that he has the map awareness as a support to know when where somebody is getting attacked, the vocalization that people have on the team to tell him to come to them and exactly where they are, it's very instantaneous reaction. So he's like, oh my god, I'm caught. It's like, where are you? Who are you? He knows exactly every time very quickly. This is the finesse of the LCS ready him. team. They, they are really, really wanting this one. It's it's. It's a set away and see if they can make it. I feel like Bunny is that guy in the gym who is spotting you, and he's not thinking about if he drops this, he's going to hurt himself. It's like when he drops this, he's going to hurt himself. So I'm already there. That's definitely a guy you want to have spotting you. Yeah. And I think Cop is pretty happy about it, too. Again, we always talk about his consistency, how he's just kind of always able to perform well on top of it. Look at that. Perfect timing. Gets the <laughs> turret. Lantern out. Takes one shot. Yeah. It, it's not the if Cop gets caught, it's when Cop gets caught on the hair already. I think uh, the Friends theme should be his theme yeah. song. <laughs> He'll be there for you. Ooh. Actually, I've never watched Friends. We gotta have a marathon sometime. Pe people told me that I remind them of Chandler sometimes, but... I can see that. Yeah. And I don't know who that is, so it doesn't help me at all. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna tell you. Now, Hanser, he's gonna try to take on who here, and I think this is a little bit more of an he's even one. Oh, okay, both the ultimate spent right there, but the Unleashed Power, that's Whoa. gonna be enough to take him down. And 
The Zhonya's Hourglass to prevent the same vicious ultimate. Speaking of Zhonya's Hourglass, Hanser didn't use his. He just got blown up with that tiny little bit of mana that Huhi had left. The fact that Huhi has the highest CS in the game, he's 4 0 and one and he's almost at that 10 per minute mark, is that enough damage. Look at these. Yeah, this time he's trying oh, his best to escape, but the Frost Queen's claim will slow him down in Glebe. Glarbu takes him out. The hook, though, Bunny's going to catch Magnum. Doesn't want to go in on that one, and he was bumped up against the terrain. But Fusion is really taking this fight to Curse Academy and roving around this jungle. Yeah, the Equalizer by Mach Noon was actually really good because if he had taken that route, Cop had taken that route to the left, Bunny would have been a lot closer for the save. Yeah, who he, he's just the solo kill king this game. 4-0 oh on that champion right now, and he has just been really difficult to deal with. They might actually start using him to split push. He did do it in that previous set, not quite as successfully on Zed. Yeah, and like I said, he always likes to split push regardless of what champion he's on. Sometimes he has a little better champion that's suited to it, and it works out for him. Also, Hanser, the fact that he didn't use his Zonias there was really big. He didn't use it to dodge the ultimate damage. He didn't use it to dodge any extra damage afterwards, and then the same vicious ultimate would have come through and maybe forced Huhi, so then he had a reaction time or time to make a decision to get away. Yeah, it's just a very quick burst that blew him up. Who he seems to be a pretty tough opponent for just about anybody on Curse Academy, but Keen, you mentioned a lot he's been down in CS this game. This is the guy who's the master of counterpicks, but he first picked this Zed over who he's Syndra. So that's kind of been the key here, that he hasn't been able to utilize that uh, smart strategic counterpicking that he's known for. Yeah, and a big thing that happened yesterday against Coast, a lot of people thought that Coast was a little bit favored over Curse Academy just based on the fact that Coast has been around for a long time. They always seem to make it towards the finals and almost there, but it just happened again. The big thing about that was Curse Academy was strategically outplaying Coast across the map and taking little skirmishes that they got things off of. Like whenever Coast won a fight, it didn't result in more objectives falling into their hands. And then sometimes they would get like one and then they would be like, all right, let's go for two. And it would be too many for them to actually handle. They weren't very reserved in their play yesterday, which was something that was surprising to me because Jez is on that team. Jez seems to be more of the controlled player. But this Curse time? Academy, they need to rely on their strategic prowess, especially over Fusion at this point, because Fusion did show a lot of problems with their team yesterday against Final Five. They fixed it mid-series, but there were conditions to it. And Curse Academy, like I said, they have been playing towards the strategic edge. Yeah, this time, Curse Academy seems to have that, what they executed yesterday, kind of done against them. And this is the kind of thing that Coast was trying in a couple of their games as well, but they're getting pushed in right now. Four towers to three, but it looks like it could be more sometime soon. But Fusion not taking any fights that are unnecessary here, just trying to drag Curse Academy around and bait them into a trap. And speaking of drags, they have three of them on Fusion's side and zero on Curse Academy. Fusion was not in control of Dragon for the majority of the games that they played yesterday. So the fact that they've kind of looked at that and been like, all right, the early Dragon needs to come to us. They picked St. Vicious off before it. Really, really, really big for them because they have these extra things that are going to help them siege. And they've always contested this blue. Yeah, it's been pretty great, actually, how they've been able to opportunistically take those dragons this game on the side of Fusion. Last time, they pretty much neglected the buff it offered the whole time. Here we go, Keen gonna jump onto Mac Noon. He's got the damage, he's got the death mark, but the equalizer's just thrown down. Keen's starting to melt now, though. Uh, he's fighting him on it. I think he's gonna be able to do it. Whoa! One for one, and Saint Insurance Policy not required. Nope. It's one of those ones you pay for but never use. It's still a good kind. Yeah, it's better safe than sorry. Exactly. I would rather have Saint Insurance than not. Anyway, they're going to go straight after this turret. They pick it up for themselves. And that play down bottom, the fact that he just traded the, the two flashes as well. Mach Noon does have TP. He can still get into these fights. Look at this. Hanser, oh, this is big. Whoa, Whoa, they just blow it back. Hanser, never mind. St. Vish is trying to make something happen, but he evaporates as well. Two for two so far, considering what happened down in the bottom side. But they're making some more moves here. Nintendo, though, leading the charge. Cop and Bunny Fufu are all alone. They can't follow up. Who is just blowing people up before they have time to react? Hanser has not been able to use his... Oh, maybe. Ah, uh, nope. there's a teleport coming in for Mac Noon right now. This is dangerous. Cop's going to take the lantern out early. Yeah, that's the oh TV boy. pressure that I was talking about. Hanser, though, he hasn't been able to use his ultimate on himself. He hasn't been able to use his Zonias. Who he's just utterly destroying him in like a quarter of a second. That guy has Morello's death cap Zonias 32 minutes into this game. Yeah, who he has just become a monster at this point. And it's really hard for not just an individual member of Curse Academy to deal with, but even two, even three. And Fusion, they rely on this beat you down style. And Mac Noon, he's not slouching either. He might have the same number of deaths as kills, but he's able to 1v1 versus Keen, playing it out incredibly well. 
that use of his equalizer. And they're starting to try and control this Baron pit right now. It's 32 minutes in. That's when that buff starts to look pretty tasty. Yeah, and at the same time, though, like, you see all that gold. It's looking really tasty. Is all that CS that the Intanso has been able to get for himself in this mid game. He's just been relegated kind of to farming, which is an 80 carries just dream. You want to have a lot more farm than your opponent, and you just like, nobody's fighting? All right, cool. Let's just scale up a little bit, come back to the fight with an extra item, and then people are like, whoa, whoa, why am I getting chunked? Because last time the 80 carry hit me, it wasn't as much. So you kind of have to keep stock of what the 80 carry has been buying and how far ahead he is. Because the Intanso now has that Bloodthirster. It's hard to poke him out, and he's got that extra shield. Yeah, he definitely has a, a solid amount of farm, not to mention a decent KDA here over Cop, but. The Antonso, he was sort of the linchpin of the strategy yesterday. They, they did everything they could to grab him as many kills as possible and keep him alive in the positioning. But speaking of positioning, Bunny, he's caught right now. Here comes Nintendo jumping in, but Bunny will flash his way to safety. But Saint, though, oh, man. A couple of ultimates spent on that one, but they're no worse for the wear. Fusion perfectly fine to keep pushing this one forward, and they keep going back to try and bait out this Baron, getting the vision control on. They might actually just start it in a minute, but they know the Curse Academy still making threats here. And they go back... It worked before. There's no vision anywhere in this area for Curse Academy. Fusion have complete control of it. And the thing is, is Curse Academy just going to push up the middle directly? They're checking it with things. They're calling the they're calling the bluff right now. But this is still pretty dangerous Watch for getting anywhere close. There's the rocket. They're going to set up Ooh. the Saint ultimate. Oh my goodness. They start to soften him up. And that's the first time we've seen Saint use that as an initiate. He's still nowhere near this fight, though. Bunny, wrapping Ooh, around. He's a little far forward. Who's he's going to catch somebody. It's Glebe, and he's going to nearly melt, flashing away, trying to keep him alive. They have vision on him. Here comes Keen. He's jumping right back on in. They just keep trying to make Hook something happen. Who he's on. Keen gets the end. They're going to look for him. Bunny's on. A massive equalizer right there. Hauncher's going to go golden. Cop the shutdown gold. They finally take down Hui, but it's a one for two. That's exactly the person, the people, that they need to pick off. The AD carry and the mid laner, the highest gold members of Fusion at the moment, takes off. Tons of gold. They basically are sitting at 30,000 gold of combat stats at this point with these members alive. So they can easily push this turret. They absolutely needed that. Get a little bit more map pressure back for themselves. They have some more vision around Baron. They're not letting Fusion run rampant wherever they want to be. Nintendo's going to try to check this one. But meanwhile, no one's defending Keen. Here comes Magnum. Tower's going to be gone, though. He preemptively puts the shadow out, takes one more shot, goes back. They're masters of escape. Back to even here in terms of gold. But the dragons are still very much in favor of Fusion. And Curse Academy, they still have to back to capitalize off of those last little skirmishes and kills they picked up. The dragon's up in five seconds. There's also a pretty big wave pushing bot right now, and Keen's going to go deal with that one. But they could just call this bluff on Fusion and go straight for the Baron. Saint's actually going to walk right onto a pink ward, try and clear hits. it away. That's a lot. Yeah, I They're think that's not worth it, Saint. And he might be caught here. See how fast he can float away. But here comes Nintendo. Catch X the jungler. Right oh, God. in front of him. Uh-oh, Saint realizes he's walked right into a pincer trap. And here we go. Lantern. He's going to try to make something happen. The lantern's on. Oh. But his health bar is so low. Mac Noon taking him down. That is the smite advantage. And they're starting to clear Scuttle right now. It could be a Baron fight. Bunny needed a little stronger arm there to just chuck it a little further. Saint couldn't make it, but at the same time, Nintendo positioned himself for the Cataclysm or the Flash to follow and lock them up afterward. This is going to be a Baron. No smite available. No, really not. Now, Hunts are going to try to do something about it. He's going to go in ult, and he's going to go Zanyas, but he might just seal his own fate right there. Oh, Big Hui. equalizer's on. Hui's trying to make something happen, but the end's going to pick up a double kill and just knock him on over. Nintendo, everyone's blinking half bars. Leave is down. Cop and Bunny are the only ones left alive, and they're going to call it quits for now. Oh, maybe not. Cop wants to go in for more. He's going to take down it. Nintendo. He gets one off the board. A two for three. Valkyrie. Can he find more? He's not going to go for it. Ooh. He has Valkyrie, he can't, he just decides not Play to go over game. the wall. He's playing the safe game. You no, know, the cop style, he's not gonna jump into who he's just hitting him backwards. And we're gonna take a look at that one again. That was pretty wacky. Now Hanser comes on Ooh. in, he goes ult, he goes golden. Who he nearly gets him there though. Yeah, and cop is just spraying people down here. At the same time, the death mark comes out from Keen onto who he, but he immediately swaps to Glebe and autos him to kill him during the Zonias. Very good reaction time to just split off of that. And watch Cop here. He gets the flash, and the auto follows. Oh, that was beautiful. And of course, uh, this does mean that Curse Academy, since you saw him moving down there, they were able to pick off a dragon while all that was happening. So they do get something back in their pockets. They did trade, and they got rid of a couple of Baron buffs, but it's still a rough situation to be in right now. They're starting to fall a little bit behind in gold. Towers are even, so they are answering a little bit back, but it just seems that Fusion has that edge in those fights. Yeah, that first dragon is extremely important because it multiplies the stats that you already have. Basically, you're getting tons of free gold in terms of combat stats and efficiency. You know, it's really good for like your mid laner and your carry, your top laner. 
not so much your support, because they usually like to buy wards and pinks and stuff like that. And it's not like, oh, Thresh has six more damage, eight more damage. Not hey man, those he, he did get one kill in a flash auto. Uh, that's true. All right, so Might not you're right. Yeah, there we go. You're right. Uh, but yeah, Bunny really has been more about that utility, and this is why Thresh has been one of his big champions, or his big champion in particular. He just knows how to make the maximum use of that, and he saved Cobb not once, not twice. It, it's almost countless at this point. Yeah, Bunny's positioning for the lanterns are, is just something that I, I can't stop talking about because I love the way he positions for those, but then he knows when to be offensive with his hooks. Look at this fusion splitting with the Baron buff. This is a team that they do 1 3 1 all the time, and when we have a Baron, that's the best time to do a 4 1, a 1 3 1, and they already do it naturally. Oh my goodness. It's only anyone can collapse on that one, but Hanser, who he might be in Ooh. trouble here. He He's going to go ulti and. Wow, he just bails right on out, but Fusion might have stayed a little long. Lee, he's going to get caught again. Bunny, this guy does not miss a hook, and St. Fish is getting the kill. He's going to go for more. He's going to start melting those health bars. That AP is starting to hurt, and now this is a chance for Curse Academy to go on. Hui goes golden himself, but he's not going anywhere. Going back to Fountain, I should say. Two for an untrade. Mac Noon, they're still chasing. St. Fish is trying to make something happen, flashing away from the Equalizer. He's still pretty low, getting burned down by Mac Noon, but he doesn't go. That is a three for none. They're still chasing on, and now they have some breathing space. The Seraph's embrace on St. Vicious, saving him there from the silenced rumble and those extra auto attacks. Perfect play there from St. And also the rest of Curse Academy. Little overextension from Glebe to start that one off. And this is not the first time we've seen Fusion making minor mistakes that turn into big things. This is actually really important because who he used his ultimate on Hanser, and Hanser didn't take any damage from it. He ended up using his Zonias at the right time. So he made up for those times that he did in Zonias because this resulted in three kills for them. Bunny's got his Mobies going. We see Keen flash, get that distance closed, and then close it, kill him out. Yeah, now the besiegers are the besieged. This is going uh, to be Keen a pretty rough. Flash. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was the, just the shadow. It was that fast. Yeah, it was quick, man. Uh, they will have to back away from this one. There's still a few members with the Baron buff, so that will be a useful tool for Fusion <gasps> for a little bit now. But Curse Academy, I mean, if the, any team knows how to come back from behind, how to adapt in any number of situations that's not already in the LCS, these are the guys. This match is extremely close between these two teams, 40 minutes in. The only thing that really divides them is just the dragon count. It doesn't even feel like 40 minutes. It's, it's no. just been a, a single fluid movement. And really, again, it's been small mistakes, if any at all. It, it, great play from both sides. Fusion capitalizing on those dragons, taking those skirmish fights, but now Curse Academy's been answering back. And St. Vicious was 4-1 and one at one point, really early on in the game. He's 6-5 and five now. His effectiveness after building, you know, he was sitting on the tier, he got the Magus. After building towards that Rylize has been really low because he's trying to be durable in these fights and stay alive to get his damage down on a consistent basis. But instead, he's getting blown up. He's getting pushed out of the fight zoned, so he can't even get his damage off as Karthus, and he basically is just a global ultimate. He's been making quite good use of that. He's going to use it right now. Look at how much damage they have to start off. They're going to force Huhi to use his Zhonyas and melt him down. Cop's going to take that death mark on Nintendo. They're going to hook him on back. Keen's a little bit low, though. They're going to make something happen here. Keen's going to pick off Nintendo. A pair of Zhonyas for Mac Noon and Hanser. Mac Noon getting bursted down. They've taken Saint, but he's still in the middle of it all. A double kill over oh. to Keen. They're looking for more. Forcing the flash is Cop. And only Nian Tonso and Glebe Glard will make it out of that one alive. A brilliant trade for Curse Academy. Everybody really low at the start of that. And I was talking about St. Vicious' effectiveness right there. He's just trying to run in the fights and get himself killed so he can do damage and cause this zone. Big part of that play was the fact that he was flanking on the right side, used his ultimate, and it made Fusion panic. They split. They went all these different directions, and then they left Huhi out to dry, and he got locked up. Yeah, this is the strategy that Saint was hoping would pay off big dividends. And, well, Bunny's going to catch. Whoa, Ooh. my goodness, Gleam Glarbu, where did he go? And they're going to be able to siege this one down pretty quick. Like, and you know, it we, we, looks like we might see an inhibitor first for Fusion a few minutes ago, but now it's starting to look the other way. Yeah. Oh. You got to be careful, Nian. I don't know it's if you can really defend close. this one, buddy. There we go. Inhibitor number one, 42, nearly 42 minutes into this game. Baron and Dragon both less than a minute away. And that's the thing, too, is they're backing off just in time so that they could actually back by heal up and come to one of these objectives. They have to get vision control of beforehand. That's why they have wards on that left side of the Baron, so they're good. Let's take a look at uh, that last fight again. Yeah. Comes in on who he he's already Zonians, and everybody splits. They don't even want to be a frontline for him, and he gets immediately locked up and dropped. 
doesn't even get to perform too many actions in that fight. He does get his ultimate off, but that's about it. Saint comes in, wraps around, Niantanso has to focus into him, but if you focus into a Karthus, he still has damage output afterwards. And at the same time, he didn't take out really high priority targets. He took out the jungler. Yeah, now Fusion, they're making a quick work of this dragon right here, and that's a really good adaptation. That fourth one definitely gonna help them out as they pick that off, and they're trying to make a beeline over to the Baron, but Curse Academy is already here. They're sending four members as they have Hanser down on the bottom. They're actually going to start this one. It's spotted right away. This will prompt the reaction, but look at the damage they're able to do right now, and they might peel off this one. Bunny's trying to zone. Oh, he's just getting on out of there. Actually, trying to look tasty. The Baron is already down. It gets smited by Saint, and now the teleport coming in for Hanser. They just wanted to bait this fight up. Mac Noon, he's gone. Zonius, they're going to get the Karthus sold out. Cobb just melting through that health bar, and he's on a rampage, and now Fusion just trying to react, burning summoners in a panic, and they are in trouble. Keen still has his ultimate, still has his flash, who he's still up though, and still has his Zonyas. So they're just going to decide to push this wave out with the super minions and the Baron on them. Yeah, it was a one for two trade. So Fusion, it looked, you know, take the Baron out of the equation, it looked good, but the Baron definitely means a lot right now. So Chris Academy, happy to make that trade, happy to make that sacrifice. And here we go, we'll take a look at it again. And you see here, Bunny. Sacrificing himself, like you said, immediately gets popped there. The Baron already down, and Saint walks up, tries to die in a good place, but he can't get there. He's been zoned out of it, so he ulties, and that's enough to get multiple members low. And then the flash away from Cop was really good there, because he would have been knocked up. Yeah, the, the, you can't really underestimate the mental effect that St. Fish's Requiem has really had on this fusion team. They, they seem so full of confidence, but as soon as one of those ults lands, it either forces the Zhonyas or you take a whole chunk of damage, and then all of a sudden you see a completely different fusion team. That's the thing, is it's guaranteed damage if you hit that R and you're dead or nobody's around you. That's really big. That ability does a ton of damage. You just multiply it by five. It's like somebody walks in and goes, oh yeah, I have 800 damage, magic damage times five, 4,000 guaranteed magic damage on your team. It's a really good ability. Not only that, Can't but... Dodge. Yeah, exactly. He's also extremely effective when dead. Yeah, and, the only it, champion. and it makes them make a really tough decision. Gleeb can only use his Black Shield on one person, and then everybody else kind of has to take the brunt of the damage. The Locket's what's going to have to come out. And look at that, three Zonias across the board there. The target swapping on Curse Academy is going to have to be spot on, but Fusion is also going to have to use those Zonias appropriately, because you need a frontliner to guard you while you're in those. Oh, well, and if everybody's or already is on it, yeah. other people up. It's not exactly the easiest thing to position yourself perfectly when you're in a panic state, and that really has been what fusions looked like. They are still very close here in this game. Six towers to six, but the siege right now is commencing for Curse Academy. There's a big wave up top that Magnum should be able to deal with, but when they're already at your door, you know you're on to the back foot. He has his TP available, so he can still make it to a fight if it does break out. They're just pushing this minion up, pushing this minion wave. It's a very tense moment right now as they just wait for a catch. And they get one. They catch the Anton, so they think about going in. Don't go all the way. The wall of pain to slow him down. And Kopch can just keep taking these oh. pot shots So this is this is fun. I learned that these cannon minions, or minions in general, go through the shield of the turret. Ah. So it doesn't actually hit the shield. It just does straight damage to that turret. Until it gets thrown. Yeah. And just sitting there, and it, it's like, oh, look at that. It's a fun fact. Yeah. Now, Hanser, Keen, and Sane are hanging around the side here. And actually, look at this. They're backing off because there's some super minions in the middle they have to deal with. So, Fusion, they really can't make the choice to defend this one. They they left their middle open too long. And now these minions are starting to move in with the other buffed minions from oh, the Baron. They're going in. Hanser going to make a fight. Hui, he's getting popped. Down he goes. The Zonius is on Hanser. And here we go. Shut down for Saint Vicious on the end. They're making the fight happen here. Two for none so far. Mac Noon might not be long for this one. And that's a double kill to Saint Vicious. They're going for more. Cobb and Keen chasing them down. The Rec comes in. Can he get back to Fountain? No, he can't. That's a triple kill. And they're going to be able to take down the inhibitor. This is going to be game number one. And Curse Academy taking it in style. And they're going for these Nexus turrets. The dude trying desperately, but that's it. There's nothing they can do about this. Death timer's too long. Like you said, that is going to be game one falling to Curse Academy. After it looks like a rough time for a little bit there. All smiles from the Curse Academy side. Taking one game up. Yeah, really big play there from across the board. Huhi was really big and so was Niantanso, but they dealt with those threats by having focus on them and forcing them to blow their Zonias early to reposition themselves. Saint zoning Nian constantly. And another big thing was Cops. His consistent damage in these fights and his positioning was something that's off on the side that you don't really get your attention drawn to too often. But He's just constantly pumping things out. You have threats like Keen, St. Vicious on the front line, but then there's this guy in the back 
who's constantly dealing damage to you. And also the fact that Haunter's kind of a frontline mage too. Really, really good play there from this composition and from this team of Curse Academy and the way they executed it against Fusion. Yeah, it was absolutely miraculous the way that they were able to uh, pull off the number of plays that they did. And really, it was all a mind game trying to scatter the enemy before they really made the big play. When Saint started to scale up in that AP, he just kept using that as soon as they were about to fight. And then he could use it randomly. He didn't do this, but he could just use it randomly, and they'd just panic anyways at that point. They, they were trained to be afraid of it. At that, at that point, yeah, he could, he could do that because it's a big chunk of damage. I don't know how effective it would be because you want follow-up for it, but if he was like trying to get them off of an objective, it's still a good thing to do sometimes. Like if they're doing Baron, he did it one time. Remember the time that they were all standing in the bush and then he popped his ultimate and they were like, okay, we got to book it backwards because everybody's going to take about 800 magic damage. They all had to walk just towards Baron and away from the team and couldn't even set up that death brush. And they forced the Zanias, of course, several times. Well, let's talk a little bit about how they did it and going forward into this next game. Let's go ahead and send it over to Dash on the stage with an interview. Thank you, guys. I'm here.